you know what you should do. You should follow me on Twitter at Brummer018. Link in the description. Do it now. What is going on everyone? Brummer18 here. Thank you for joining me once again for another FIFA 20 feature video. Today, we're going to be taking a look at challenges that you can do on career mode in order to make the game more exciting for you. Different ideas. We have already done a video on this earlier on uh, in the channel's lifetime and um, we've done it for both FIFA 20 and FIFA 19 and both of them went down really well. So uh, I thought let's do another video. So this is why it'll be called six more career mode challenges. Um, and the gist of this idea is some of the realistic, some of them just the challenge, something to give you a different experience from the same repetitive mundane experience that you tend to get with career mode and that's one of the reasons why a lot of people myself included tend to sort of fall off a of career mode after maybe a, a season or two um, because you know they don't do enough a love to pull you in but with these challenges hopefully you'll get a, a slightly more interactive and just generally more interesting and intriguing experience so um, without further ado let's get into the first one first up we have the ownership group challenge now the idea of this challenge is to take charge of a team who is part of an ownership group so for example uh, you have the city group uh, they are the man city owners they formed a, essentially an entity a company and they went out and they've purchased multiple teams so not only do they own man city they also own melbourne they own Hirona in Spain, they own New York City FC um, and Yokohama uh, in Japan, amongst a couple of other teams who are currently not in the game. Uh, the objective of this is to take charge of a team, one of the teams owned by this ownership group. Um, during this career mode, you can only sign players from other teams within that ownership group. Youth players do count, so you are able to also send out Youth Academy players um, and sign them as well but in terms of actual transfers you can only sign players from other teams within that ownership group the idea of this and essentially the challenge of this is can you still achieve success with that limited transfer um, sort of philosophy and and success can be sort of judged by your own measure you know what do you sort of class as success with the team and, and with the league that you're in for example i think the success if i was doing this person challenge personally and i am going to do this one actually the way i'm going to measure success is can i win and then retain a league title um the following season so you know i think that's a good way to measure success preferably if you are going to do man city um or the city group don't do man city because you know that that's generally a lot easier you've already got the basis there whereas if you're doing someone like new york or, or hirona etc you know, you've got a bit more of a challenge there. So, you know, I think that's one that you can definitely sink your teeth into. Remember, it doesn't have to just be Man City. You can also do other ownership groups as well. For example, Red Bull. They have Red Bull Salzburg, they have Red Bull Leipzig, and they also have New York Red Bulls. There is also Red Bull Brazil, but um, unfortunately, they are not on the game. So one of those three will be a very interesting challenge for you also. I think in particular, someone like Red Bull Salzburg would be a good one uh, to sort of change that success. Not so much winning on a league title front, but you know, European success. Can you get further in the European um, competitions, the Champions League and the Europa League? Same with Red Bull Leipzig. Can you finally win a top league title with them and retain it? Uh, and the same with New York Red Bulls as well. Bear in mind, there are other teams that you can do it. The Olympiacos owner, who of course also owns Nottingham Forest. Don't forget, though, of course, with Olympiacos, if you'd were to pick them, you would have to swap them into a different league because, of course, the uh, Greek league is not on the game. Watford and Udinese also have the same owners, um, or the ownership group, should I say. So they're another one that you could do with, although you do limit your uh, potential signings with only one other team. So that is the ownership group challenge completed. Next, we move on to the next uh, career mode idea, and that is the golden journeyman. So this one, more of a, a, again, a journeyman career mode where you move from club to club, but the golden journeyman is the twist. The objective of this is you have 15 total seasons in career mode uh, that you play before you're forced to retire. So what the objective in this challenge is win 15 top division titles in 15 different nations in 15 years. So every single season, you have to go to a different team in a different country and win the top league title. Should at any point in any of the seasons you fail to do this, 
you lose. Basically, you lose the challenge and you start again should you wish to. If you want a tip on how to succeed in this, start off at a very low reputation country. So countries um, on the game with the lowest rated teams. So like Ireland, um, Japan is another one. Things like Poland, Korea, etc. Those are uh, leagues where you know they're very low rated. And so if you start in them, you can win that league title. You can get that done fairly easily. Um, and then when you're moving clubs, you'll only have the smaller reputation ones to go to. Whereas, let's say you started as a Premier League team, you win that. When you go to you know change clubs, you won't get the lower reputation leagues. So you know after about four or five years, when say you've done the Premier League, you've done La Liga, Serie A, Eredivisie, and, and French League One, um, you're not going to get many offers from other leagues. So then you couldn't come. come Come, come to a halt essentially but if you do start in a lower league um then you know you will have sort of the uh, the ability to to build up and, and work your way up the table when needed so that is the golden journeyman and probably the toughest one um in this uh, in this thing really next we'll move on to the national policy challenge fairly self-explanatory select any team with and within any nation and you can only sign and play players from that country throughout the entire career. Your entire matchday squad of 18 players must be of that same nation. So, for example, if you sign as Parma in Italy, in the Serie A, you can only sign Italian players and you can only play Italian players. Let's say you first come to Parma and, of course, they've got a squad full of not just Italian players, they've got players of all sorts of different nationalities and stuff. None of them can be in your matchday squad. You've got to try and sell them. And don't worry if you don't sell them in the first transfer window, but at some, but you just can't play them, basically, and they can't be in your matchday squad of 18. So they've got to be only players from the same nation as your club. With this philosophy in place, can you win and then retain the top division title within that country, playing only players of that nationality and that of course will be the challenge again as i said at the start of the video you can measure success how you want you can set your own goals maybe it's can you win the champions league or can you you know do this and that etc you know it doesn't you can decide make the challenge as easy or as hard as you want but that's just the the premise which i'm sort of giving as as the basis on this video so generally the challenge is very um you know nice and complex but certainly one that is achievable depending on the team Moving on from that, we now have the European Super League Challenge. Of course, any of you with an eye on the news in football will have heard rumours about a European Super League. Teams with the biggest fan bases and perhaps the most highest revenues in Europe attempting to try and break away from their leagues and the Champions League to form their own European Super League in order to get more revenues. What you do in this challenge is you swap the 18 to 20 highest rated teams into one league so whether that be the Bundesliga of course you've got 18 teams there or the Premier League 20 teams etc swap all the best teams into that league of course all the highest rated teams on the game are from Europe so it will be a European Super League select one of the teams and see if you can win and then retain the league title so of course that will be the biggest challenge particularly for people who are playing on the highest difficulties as well because you will have all the best teams in that league. Now of course you can make exceptions. For example, you know, Man City are a higher rated team than AC Milan for example. So usually in this case Man City would go into that European Super League, but let's say you want the biggest teams and of course AC Milan are absolutely massive club, you know, global fan base, one of the biggest in the world without doubt. Um, let's say you want them in instead of Man City, you know, you can make those sort of exceptions and that's absolutely fine and we could see that happening should a European Super League be formed. Um, so, yeah, go with that. But generally, you want four and a half, five star rated teams um, with the biggest fan bases. Just plunk them in there and see what you can do. Certainly one entertaining and I think that's another one that I'm really going to give a good go at myself. Next up, we have a more realistic one, certainly ones that um, boffins like me, when it comes to football, uh, do enjoy, and that is the Financial Fair Play Challenge. Select a team in Europe and abide by the Financial Fair Play rules. These vary depending on the league that you're in, so you will have to research them depending on the league that you're playing in. Should you break the rules, give yourself a 12-month transfer ban and 
force yourself to lose the next three games by forfeiting each one as a way of replicating a nine point deduction. So this one is extremely challenging and of course, you know, some of you watching this may not, you know, like the sound of this because of the fact that, you know, you've got to try and follow the rules and your club's finances, you know, very, very tightly and very, um, you know, sort of impactfully. And as a result, you may feel, you know, I, I just can't be bothered to do that. I just want a light hearty career mode and that's fine. But really for, for people like myself, for example, you know, I just want something to rep to get rid of that as I said, repetitive, mundane career mode experience. And the way of doing that is to give myself something to focus on. And so with this financial fair play rules, you give yourself that. You know, you can track the finances with the whole new finances incoming and outgoings tab in career mode, which is very, very handy. Um, and like I say, you'll find the rules of financial fair play rules of any league with a quick Google search. For example, in, uh, say, the English League 1 and English League 2, um, it's a certain percentage of weight of your turnover can only be spent on wages. The owners are only allowed to invest a maximum of a certain amount, usually 15 million over the course of three seasons. Um, and so, you know, you can keep track of that. And it's very easy to do once you get into it. So this is certainly one for the more realistic sort of, um, you know, seekers in this instance. And certainly a challenge that I think a lot of people would enjoy um, given a chance. Finally on the list, the sixth, but um, certainly not least challenge in this video is the feeder club challenge. Select a team outside that of the top ones within the country. Invest your money into the youth academy and hidden gem players in the transfer market. Improve their overalls and then sell them on at a profit. Keep repeating this process, not spending lots of money on transfers in the process. Can you remain competitive and achieve your objectives and achieve success in general whilst maintaining this selling club mentality? So, for example, I look at teams like maybe Southampton or Brentford. These clubs have very good academies and are very good at, you know, not only bringing players through their academies young, but also finding hidden gems, players in the lower leagues who can fit into their system, who they improve, and then they sell on at a profit. But those clubs are able to remain competitive you know, we've got Southampton who've been in the Premier League for some time now and Brentford who have been pushing for promotion over the last uh, few seasons and certainly look like they could do it within the next couple of seasons or so if they keep going the way that they are. And, you know, these clubs have been able to keep afloat. Brentford, for example, they're building a new stadium and part of that has been funded by the fact that they've sold players, so many players at high profits, you know, and they've brought them for cheap, some of them even out of their academy and then they're able to you know, remain competitive, but they can still, you know, build the blocks of the future and aid their infrastructure. So this is, again, another one a bit more realistic uh, and you want to pick clubs in that sort of situation. So don't go and pick massive clubs, say, you know, for example, with the massive fan bases and the biggest stadiums because there's no need for them to do that. But the clubs with sort of smaller fan bases who, um, you know, sort of need to sell players to, to keep afloat and remain competitive are certainly the ones that you could you could do make the best out of in this career mode. So I think this is another one that you know a lot of people could get fun out of, constantly trying to develop players, make them better, and then when you feel like the time is right, sell them on at a bit a large profit, and then you can go again with the next one and keep repeating that process, um, you know, until you can try and achieve success and you know remain competitive. So that is it for the challenges, then, guys. I hope you guys you know give these a try and, and enjoy them and if you do please do let me know in the comment section and i will you know really appreciate it i try and respond to as many comments as i can um and so i'll endeavor to do that with yours if you've got any challenges that you'd like to throw the way of, of anyone watching this video again get at me in the comment section um let us know and uh, i'll certainly sort of maybe pin the best ones or whatever you know we'll have a look at that in due course if you've enjoyed the video, please do leave a like, but most importantly, subscribe to the channel for more regular gaming content from the likes of FIFA and Pez. Ring the bell so that you get notifications every time I upload. I've got a FIFA 20 tactic series ongoing where we recreate real life systems and also a kind of wish list series as well, slash a fixing FIFA series. So please do check that out when you can. And I know we are going to finish it off there. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Come on.